Oh, thank you. Okay, so folks, we are on another bonus episode of Vulnerability Time Season 3. I am your host, published author Josias, the earliest episode, April. So, okay. So, I, folks, I decided to randomly do this episode. Um, of course, it is a bonus episode. Something that was really on my mind is something that I realized that our society does... Um, We're conditioned to do, and we have the wrong definition of what the word victim actually means. Um, You know, and I'm talking about me too, and me three, because, you know, I've definitely found myself so long saying, oh, victim mentality, or oh, don't be a victim. I found myself saying that Well, I don't want to say I was saying it. I believed it. There we go. Because I never really said that, but I believed it. And I heard so many other people say that. But I was spending time with Holy Spirit. And who is my higher power? Um, Folks, so this is the truth about victim. Okay, that word is a legal term. It is just simply used to describe something. Um, it is a noun, not a verb. This is what the, the word victim means. And stick with me here, folks. Okay. So the word victim means, and, and you'll see where I'm going to go with this. The word victim means an individual who has suffered direct physical, emotional, or economic harm as a result of a crime. Okay. Or a hurt. Okay, well, that's just what the definition says. Um, And I agree. I mean, it is the definition. That is true. Um, So where do we, where, where, when did this come in when we add shame to that? When, When did that become a thing? Victim shaming is so powerful and it's so stealthy. And it's like a lot of the times when we're saying victim and all the time when we're saying victim mentality or don't be a victim, we're putting shame. The definition, it clearly states, is a legal term. And I'm going to repeat it again. An individual who has suffered a direct physical, emotional, or economic harm as a result of the commission of a crime. Um, the word is a noun, not a verb. And when we think, when we say victim mentality, ask yourself, what does that really mean? Because when you tell yourself what it means... It doesn't mean victim. It means fixed mentality. There is a difference between being a victim and then being in a fixed mentality. There is no such thing as a victim mentality. A victim is just a legal term. It is a noun to describe something that has occurred. But we add so much shame to being victim. You know, like that's not, that's that was never a thing. We have taken that word and we have taken it so out of context and we have given it a definition and a meaning and a stigma that has nothing to do with the actual word. Um, There's no such thing as a victim mentality, but there's a such thing as a fixed mentality. Um, Because the word of victim, that's just something that I'm a victim of so much abuse. That's just a fact. There's no shame added to that word. It is simply to describe something. It is a noun. You know what else is a noun? He, she, they, them. Like those are pronouns, those are nouns, those are, those describe something. It gives it a label, it gives it a group um, to help us better just understand so that's what the word victim means. The word victim, it's not, there's, it just, it's a noun, not a verb. We add so much shame and so much weight to that word and we don't even realize that what we're doing is just simply shaming someone who is a victim. Someone who's a victim of something already been through enough shame. They don't need nothing else. Um, we, we were so easy to, and I'm not just talking about society, I'm talking about myself too, you know, because um, I'm not innocent in this. 
Um, but I'm simply saying this, folks. It just gives us something to think about. Do you find yourself doing this sometimes in your life? And you don't even really mean it, you know? Because I, we, I see what you mean when you say victim mentality. However, that, that, that doesn't exist. That's not a thing. The word that you're meaning to say is a fixed mentality. That is when something is set. That's what fixed means. There's no such thing as victim mentality. There's, there's no verb to even, because a verb is like something that's like a reoccurring action. That's, once you're a victim of something, you're a victim of it. Just, the situation can stop, but you're still gonna be a victim. We're all victims of society. We're all victims of society. Guess what? We're suffering in some way, shape, or form um, because of political reasons. There's just a lot. But that word has so much shame, such a shameful connotation. And it's just like, that's not even a definition. That's not even the definition of the word. Um, and I feel like putting shame on that word victim, it's, you know, then again, reinforcing um, people to continue to commit crime to someone. Because there's someone right now who is a victim of abuse, but they aren't gonna speak on it. They aren't gonna speak on it because of the stigma that is around it, because of the ignorance that is around it, because of the fear that is around it. You know, and just being being victimized in some way, shape, or form, you know, that's that can bring a lot of shame and fear in and of itself. And then we have society, you know, adding on more shame and fear. We have the offender adding on more shame and fear. A lot of people get away with a lot of things because people don't speak up about it. And it breaks my heart that a victim, and I'm talking about myself too, but this is a reality, that the victim will continue to allow you know, a person to continue to harm them for peace sake, for I don't want to be labeled as a victim's sake. So that's just something that we got to think about. We, we live in a place, you know, where we can, we need to, let me rephrase that. We need to be able to allow victims of something to be heard. If someone is doing a crime to this victim, they need to be heard so that crime can stop. There's so many people that just keep their mouth closed and then they end up dying in the hands of the offender or they end up killing themselves. You know, there's so much stigma around being a victim and it's just very ignorant. We, we're, we're, we're taught so far away from what a victim actually means. The word victim is a legal term, legal term. Just like the word defendant, just like the word prosecutor, just like the word judge. You know, the word victim, for, okay, for example, the word judge, saying that you're a judge, that doesn't have any shame towards it. That's how it's supposed to be when you say the word victim. They're all just legal terms to describe something. Um, so that's something interesting. That's something to think about. Because I remember that I was quiet for a long time because I was afraid to be a victim. Even though I already was, I was just afraid to even acknowledge that because I was just taught around the ignorance of Oh, it's bad to be a victim. No, 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 no. It's bad that the offender did an action to cause someone to now be victim. That's what's fucking bad. You can't blame someone who's on the receiving end of something. You know, we, we it's kind of like what we do in society. We, we look at the reaction of someone and we blame the reaction, but we don't ever look at the action. We don't ever look at the action that caused the reaction. We got to start somewhere. We can't just look at, oh, X, Y, Z. No, 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 no. And, and we like complain about X, Y, Z. But I'm like, oh, 
let's get some understanding. Let's look at the ABC. Let's look at the beginning. Let's blame that. You know, if there's going to be any shame on anybody, it should not be on the victim. It should be on the offender. If there's going to be any shame. You know, I'm not a fan of shame just in general. Um, but in this imperfect world, if we're going to add, and we do, we already add the shame. We're putting it on the wrong person, the wrong party. The shame goes on the offender, not the victim. If shame's going to go anywhere. The, per the victim didn't ask, hey, I want you to abuse me multiple times when I'm a little kid. Like, that's not, that's not how that works, you know? Um, and so, and right now, even me saying the word victim, I kind of cringe because I feel a little bit of shame. And that's, that's not necessarily a bad thing when, you, when you're able to recognize it. Because now that's something I'm able to recognize and work on, and I'm able to acknowledge in the moment, hey, I'm feeling some shame when I say the word victim, even though I know what the word victim truly means. Um, so that's what's important, folks. We always, gotta, we always gotta do our own research and we always gotta learn. And if we really don't know something, what we need to do is listen. I'm talking to myself as well. You know, it's really hard. And this is the second thing that I wanted to get into you know, talking about, you know, the whole, this, the theme of victim. Um, let's add some, some sense into that name, folks, like it was in the first place. It is a legal term. It is not a shameful term. It's, it's just as, um, it's just as impactful and powerful and quote unquote normal as the word defendant, as the word prosecutor, as the word lawyer, as the word jury, it, it, there's no shame to it. We as a society have added shame to that. And I think that's because a lot of the times when we look at leaders, a lot of times the people in power are oftentimes the offenders. So they are the ones that get to give us the definition oh, of a victim. That because it's in their hands, they have the power. The offenders have the power to continue to make the victim pay the price that the offender should be paying. The shame, the offender should be paying that price, not the victim. The belittlement, the exposure, that, that guilt, that should not be on the victim. That should be on the offender who caused this because it wouldn't, nothing would have happened in the first place if there wasn't an offender in the party. Someone had to have committed an action to cause someone to be a victim. Um, and speaking of that, why is it in our instinct to defend an offender? Why is it in our instinct to defend the offender? It's like when someone's trying to, and this happened to me a lot, and I've done this a lot. Um, I'm thankful for the Holy Spirit because now I'm able to work on it um, and working on it. But it's when I was talking about something that had happened to me and then instantly the person started defending them. And now they didn't defend them like, shut up, don't talk about, don't say what happened to you. No, they were saying, well, maybe this person, maybe they were just this or maybe or or oh, no, they didn't mean that or maybe this, this and that, you know, they're like making these excuses for this person. And though they mean well in the moment. That's not what should be done in the moment, you know? And so I asked him, I was like, so by you telling me all of these things about this person who hurt me intentionally, why, why are you telling me these things? And they're like, well, I'm just trying to help you. I was like, you want to know the best way to help me is to hear me. The best way to love me in this moment is to listen to me. That's the best way. That's the best way. I... I'm talking to you about something that is hurt, someone that has hurt me and your instinct is to defend them rather than just listen and be present with the person who was hurt because they're not in this conversation. It's just the person who is hurt, me and the person that I'm telling it to, 
I'm the focus. The person who is the hurt one is the focus. Always listen to the hurting. Always hear the hurting first. They are the priority. If you say you're trying to help them, if you're trying to love them, you got to start by hearing them. You got to listen to them. We have to do that. The best way, when especially when you just don't know, the best way to love and to help someone is to hear them, is to listen to them and to ask them, what do you need from me in this moment? How can I best be here for you? You know, and then they, let, let, let the person who's hurting tell you what they need from you in the moment, rather than you just trying to guess and give them what you think they need or give them what you're accustomed to just giving others, you know, and maybe in that moment, maybe they do need someone to um, quote unquote defend the offender. Maybe that's going to help them calm down. But what if that's not what they need in that moment? What if that's not what they need ever? I can't tell you how many times, and I've done this too, in the past when I first opened up about my um, about the sexual abuse that happened to me, you know, people would instantly say, oh, well, you just got to forgive them, or no one's perfect, you know, or hurt people hurt people. Uh, yeah, guess what? Heal people also heal people. You know what I mean? I'm just like, not once did I say that this person um, isn't perfect. I don't need you to tell me that this person isn't perfect. I, that's clearly evident. I'm not fucking perfect. What I need in that moment is to be heard. I don't need the offender to be defended. It, it, I think it can make so many people uncomfortable when someone is expressing their hurts that the best that we could do, rather than just taking it in and listening to them and just being present with them, it gets so uncomfortable that we put up a guard and deflect. We deflect. So it's like the hurt that they're sharing with us, we put a we put a like a deflect field, uh, a deflect shield, and it just goes right back to the to the uh, victim, to the person who's who was hurt. And this is the thing. I'm not saying none of this in a shameful way. And that's why I'm con constantly throwing myself under the Hummer limousine here because y'all know I'm bougie. I don't throw myself under the bus. I throw myself under the Hummer limousine, period. Um, because I'm very passionate about this. So sometimes my passion can get to the point where I don't have much patience with it. And I can begin to um, look down upon people as I'm speaking about something that I'm passionate about. This doesn't happen all the time, but it, it's it's trying to happen now. So that's why I have to humble myself in the moment and say, I'm a part of this too. That's why I have, that's why I'm gonna cons consistently um, throw myself under the Hummer limousine um, because nobody is perfect. I'm not perfect. And the same grace that I want shown to me is the same grace that I, I want to show to others. So that's why I'm gonna keep humbling myself, folks. Um, Cause I don't need to bash someone to prove that I'm passionate. I don't need to bash someone to, you know, um, prove my point. I, I don't. And so that's something that I'm learning. Um, yes. Um, well, I was going to talk about more stuff, folks, but you know what? I'm going to save that for another bonus episode. But to summarize this one up, you know, the word victim is a legal term. Okay. Um, it's just something that happened. It is just something that happened. It is not a verb. It is a noun. So we got to stop verbalizing this word. It's a noun. Okay? There's no such thing as victim mentality. That's not a thing. What is a thing is a fixed mentality. Um, so let's start to change our vocabulary. Let's work on changing our vocabulary. Um, because we just don't know who we're going to hurt and who we're going to help. You know, not everybody communicates because it's hard to communicate, especially when you're hurt. 
um, it's hard to verbally communicate. There we go. When you're hurt, because I'm like, listen, we will communicate in other ways. Communication isn't limited to verbal. So it's just like, but um, you just don't know who you're going to hurt or help by just, you know, being the best that you can be for that person in this moment. Now, it's okay to learn. It's okay to not know this. Do not go back and beat yourself up. Because guess what? It's not like we're it's not like we were taught this. We can't be held accountable if we don't know something. So now that we do know, let's work on it. Let's work on it. It doesn't make any sense to now that you know this information to continue to just victim shame people. You know what I'm just like cuz maybe you're hearing this because somebody in your life is going to come in your life and because of you, because of your words, you might be the reason that they decide to live on this earth a little bit longer. Because suicide, depression, uh, that has a smile on its face. That looks like hanging out with friends. It doesn't always look like you're lonely, sad, crying a lot, depressed. That's not what that always looks like. And, you know, I'm, I'm a testament to that. You know, no one thought that I... Um, killed myself when I was 15 because I was so quote unquote happy no one thought that so this is the thing folks like listening sometimes is the best way to learn you know if you're not sure about something listen about it if you're not sure about someone's experiences that's the thing we gotta listen we gotta hear the hurt because you listening right now, there are areas in your life that hurt. And I want you to be heard because you are worth being heard. You are worth being listened to. A lot of things could just heal. A lot of things could just love if we just all learn to listen to each other first before speaking that is very hard to do i am working on it i am nowhere near perfect on that you know and, and literally folks no one to blame you because i mean look at what we that's why i don't watch the news but look on tv look at the quote-unquote leaders and the people that we look up to the quote-unquote adults they're just arguing and talking over each other not one person is listening to each other especially when they both have good points but they don't even want to like they don't even want to hear each other out and like come to a common agreement or come to like an understanding because understanding doesn't mean that you agree with somebody. Understanding is just like, oh, okay, I see where you're coming from. I see how you got two plus two equals five. When to me, I think two plus two equals four. I got the math to prove it, yada, yada, yada. But to this person, two plus two equals five. I don't agree with that it's five, but I, I, I want to see where they where they went from A to Z, how they got from two plus two to two plus two equals five. That's is understanding. Understanding is not agreement. And a lot of times two plus two equals four. Six minus two also equals four. A lot of times when people are like talking over each other and arguing with each other, one is two plus two equals four and one is six minus two equals four, but they're not listening to each other for them to see that, oh my gosh, like we got kind of like the same goal, the same answer. We just got, we're just going about it in different ways, but it's like, we're all wanting this same thing. Um, but people are too busy, stuck on, you know, themselves and that is something that we are taught and conditioned in this society, um, in this world, you know? Um, and when I say society, I mean modern society. I don't mean nothing exclusive to America. Y'all know I love America. I love my country. But when I'm saying society, I mean to say modern society. You know, um, this is just something that I see a lot. And we see a lot now in modern society because we have media because we're able to see what's going on across the world or we're at least able to see something because y'all know media can manipulate y'all know media manipulates oh, they just show what they want to show let me not get on that you already know i don't like the media go listen to season one <laughs> go listen to season one but um 
yes, I think I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, also, the first instinct should not be to defend the offender. It should be to listen to the hurting. Hear the hurting. Because if it was you that was hurt, I would hope someone be listening to you because you are worth being heard. Your feelings are valid. That's also another thing, folks. Feelings don't have a gender. <laughs> feelings don't have a sex. Feelings are human and we're all human before we are male, female, or non-binary. We're all human. But we're in, a, we're in a day and age, well, I mean, it's kind of been like this for a while where we, we determine which humans have emotions and that doesn't get us anywhere. Okay, because we see that lead to suicide. We see that on average, 75% of suicides in America are men. 70, 72% of suicides in the UK are men. Um, majority of suicides around the globe are men. Now, this is not saying that men having to, you know, that stigma of men shutting down their emotions or having to hide their emotions is to blame for all of that. No. What it is saying, though, is it is a reality that happens enough for it to where it needs to be confronted. Um, psychologically speaking, biologically speaking, it is not healthy for emotions to be held in. They come back up and they manifest in a multitude of ways. I'm not going to super get all into that. Y'all will have to look um, for the season finale of this season, which is coming out probably like the first week of September. Um, and we're going to be going into diving into suicide. Um, the title of the episode is going to be called People Are Dying Out Here. It's time to help them. It's time to help them. You know, um, and I think I'm going to do a two-parter. Um, the first, the original plan was I was just going to do an episode on male suicide because it's not talked about. And I'm tired of it. It needs to be talked about. It needs to be talked about. I'm like, there's way too many damn people dying. And the fact that the the rates of male suicide is increasing. Y'all, it's about to hit 80% within the next 10 years. 80%. At least 80%, excuse me, within the next 10 years. At least 80%. That is more than half. Um, that is more than three quarters. Um, that is on its way to 90%. And I mean, it, then we got 95%. I mean, like, who's to say it's going to stop at at least 80%? Um, I'm going to highlight that word, at least. That's scary. We got to, folks, running away from things, that does not solve anything. It just simply runs away from it. It doesn't solve it. So that thing's gonna creep back around in a multitude of different ways and manifest in different ways. Um, um, and like how I, like how I said, um, y'all know I get off topic. We love ADHD, um, but yes, our instinct is to defend the offender. Let's change that. Let's change that. Us not defending the offender doesn't mean that we're bashing the offender. What it means is we prioritize the hurting first. We listen to them first. It's not about believing them. It's not about agreeing with them. It's not about taking sides. It's not. It's literally hear the individual. Listen to them. They, just, they need to be heard first and foremost. Just because we listen to someone doesn't mean that we're agreeing with them. Doesn't mean we're picking sides. It's simply, we have ears, folks. That is one of the gifts that we do have. Maybe in that moment, the person just needs your gift. Your gift of listening. Your gift of hearing them. So let's continue to go out there and make this word, this word, this world a better, more just phenomenal place because too many people are dying. We're tired of it. Um... 
and when is enough going to be enough? Is it gonna have to, is, is someone close to us going to have to experience these things for us to understand or for us to finally get it? I hope not. I hope not. Cause I know there's a lot of areas in my life where I am more reactive than proactive. So basically that means something has to happen hard for me to get it. You know, and that doesn't, that's not in every area of my life, but that is in some areas of my life. For example, like going to counseling, I know I need to go ahead of time. I don't need to wait until the end of my road or close to the end of my road to go, but that's when I do it. And I advocate for therapy and counseling. I love it. And when I get in it, I stay in it a long time, you know, but it's just like, I will do everything else first. When it's like, why? Why when I can just go now? Why do I have to wait until like, I, I don't know, like why do I have to wait until like I wanna like self harm or something like that? You know, like why do I have to wait when I can just avoid that as a whole? Um, so, that's something, because suicide is not something to play with. Um, you don't want to have to experience that personally or from someone who's really close to you for you to get it. Um, you don't want to have to um, have someone close to you become a victim of something for us to now have grace on them. Um, we don't want to have to do that. People want to feel safe, folks. Safety equals sanity. And that's probably going to be the start of the next bonus episode. Um, safety and sanity. Safety equals sanity. Safety is a form of sanity. And we need safety, don't we? Um, yes. Uh, with that being said, folks, if no one has told you today that they love you, please allow me to be the first I love you and I like you. And allow yourself to be the second because you are worth it. You are worth it. Even when you when you feel like you don't deserve love, that's the thing. Deserving is not in your vocabulary. You are worth. Worth is above deserving. You are so lovable just as much on your good days as you are on your bad days, you are so fucking lovable. So, also I want you to go ahead and text someone, folks, and let them know that they are lovable and worth it. Let them know, just randomly, let, let them know, let them know. Okay, and with that being said, folks, this has been another episode of Vulnerability Time. Um, and I will see y'all next episode for whatever the hell we, we will be talking about. Because I don't know currently. I mean, I have a lot of the episodes recorded. I just don't know which one's going to be after this. I don't even know when I'm going to release this episode. The point is, the episode will be released, and I'm going to figure out what I'm going to title it. With that being said, bye, folks. Bye.